So what are the steps to publishing a book? Now that could be a uh, tough question to answer in a very short amount of time because I don't know what your business is. I don't know what you're writing about. I don't know uh, where you're going with it, what you're planning on doing with it five years from now. But I will tell you that when we work with people, we work with entrepreneurs all over the world who are writing their first book, second book, third book, the steps to publishing a book are actually pretty simple. So if you want to take out a pen and paper and write this down, this is what I teach all of our clients when it comes to Dreamstarters Publishing and Book Lead Pro. Dreamstarters Publishing is the number one book creation service for entrepreneurs, and Book Lead Pro is the software program that you use to help elevate your book so it can generate leads for your business. The steps to publishing a book really begin and really begin with the end goal. So if you're clear on the direction you're taking it, once the book is in your hands, then all of a sudden you work your way backwards, okay? So step one, write down, if the book was in my hands right now, how would I use it? Would I use it for speaking gigs? Would I use it to get more clients? Would I use it to grow a business? Would I use it just to educate children on how to live life? Would I use it to give away? Would I use it to do book signings? The end goal is what matters. And you could get very philosophical, but if there is no target, then you're never going to hit anything. So you got to envision the target first. All right, so the end goal. Then you write down, this is step two, what are the lessons you want to teach those people when you're on that podcast or with your clients or in front of those people or however you're going to use it? What are the main takeaways of this book? So you jot them down. The number that we always look for is, is 15. That's a magic number in book creation. 15 generic lessons you want to teach your audience. Some have more, some have less. Now this is... You can go in many different ways. This is a sp big spider web. Book publishing is a big spider web. It's not a one size fits all for everybody. But if you're an entrepreneur growing a business, there's a system you should follow. There's a, there's a process because it's simple and it gets done and what's done can be used and what is used can you know, elevate your name and increase your brand and increase awareness. So. The step two is the, the general lessons. Step three now, this is where you humanize yourself. I never thought I'd have to say this so many times, but you actually have to make yourself not a business man or woman. You have to make yourself just a human. So you humanize your business. You, you, you connect with your audience through the power of story. Your story matters. How you got from A to B to C to wherever you're at now matters. Why does it matter? It's because human beings connect emotionally deep down in their brain with who you are as a person. They're, they're going to connect with your background. They're going to connect with your viewpoints. Have you been through a divorce? Do you love dogs? Did you get this general lesson from your grandfather? When you first started a business, what did you think and how did you respond and how did you do what you do? You have to start to share that with your audience. Now, the story is probably the most important piece to the book. And the reason why is because that's what they're gonna remember. It's almost as if they're going to take that lesson and almost dissect it to a point where they say, I'm not going to really pay attention or listen to this person until I know a little bit about them. And that's why your story is probably more important than the lesson itself. So those stories, you connect a lesson with a story, story with lesson throughout the entire book. Now, this is not, you're not writing anything down past maybe a sentence or two. You're not writing the entire book. You have to map it out first. And then the last piece of the, the planning stage is the target audience. Are you trying to hit 
men or women or entrepreneurs or men and women for 20 to 40 years old? Are you looking for people who love dogs? Are you looking for people who have kids, single mothers, single fathers? Who is the exact person that should read this book? Who can you really help? And if you say everyone, it's too bland. That's too generic. General lessons tied to specific stories geared towards a specific audience. The more specific, the better. And the reason why is because you can adjust the verbiage very easily. Heck, a ghostwriter can make it a lot easier on you if you know who you're trying to reach. If you're sitting in front of a room of all athletes, do you think your language, do you think how you say things is going to be a little bit different than the people who are computer programmers? Of course. Who you're talking to matters. Grant Cardone, a great sales trainer out there, always says that the audience is what makes a great speaker. If you're the greatest speaker in, the, in front of the wrong people, you'll never be remembered. But if you're in front of the right people, even an average speaker is going to connect and help and affect change in their life. So you got to know who you're talking to. Now, once you know the lessons, the stories, and the audience, this is where it gets good. You start to put things down on paper. Now, I want you to know that I didn't bring up title and subtitle yet. Because I believe you need to adjust the content completely and then build a title around the content. I do not subscribe to the philosophy that you start with the title and then go with the content. And the reason why is because once you do that, now you're trying to marry all this, this, this content, which could be 25, 35,000 words towards something that is just three words. You want to build the three, four words, or whatever, around the big content, around the 35,000 word book. So you start putting down content, lesson story, lesson story, lesson story, geared towards a specific audience. The writing itself could be done through a ghost writer, could be done through a transcription service. I've seen people do that. We do not subscribe to that philosophy either. Here at Dream Starters Publishing, we do an interview process and we help you write the book based off of a ghost writer behind the scenes. And then we do a two... Uh, Two-time edit run-through where we're able to kind of clear things up. But let's just say you hire a ghostwriter such as Dream Search Publishing or you wrote it on your own. However you go about it, you need to do the writing. Of course, you need to write it. You need to get it from your thoughts down on a piece of paper, make it tangible. It needs to become real. It needs to be words on a screen. And once that's there, now you can, you can chop it up. You can clean it up. You can make it Beautiful. You can have it sent to many different editors and they go through and just keep cleaning it up. You could spend your entire life on one book. I don't advise that you do this because you're losing time and time is the only thing we'll never get back. So the more time you burn up, remember, you're not trying to save it from, you know, putting it out there and then people coming back to you and saying, oh, it's, it's not perfect. Perfect is subjective. So what's good enough is going to help you. And if you keep it in this Word document and you're the only one that's able to read it, that's going to do no one good. It's not going to help anybody in this world. So even if it's not 100% perfect, I recommend you get eyeballs on it in some fashion. Whether it's an editor, whether it's a friend, a family member, whether it's you send it out to a service that cleans it up and gets it done, keeping it in your desk drawer or just for your eyes only, it's a waste of time and a waste of energy. Those are two things you do not want to waste. <laughs> so anyways, you get it down on a piece of paper. Now you have the content and this is where I believe the next step is, whether you get it done through an editing service, whatever, now you start to plan out the title of the book. The content's there, it's real. You start to put down the title now and the subtitle. And hopefully it's teaching something and it's recommending a service or recommending how to fix people's lives or anything entrepreneurial, uh, financially, whatever. Now you start to think of, okay, this is a, a guide. This is a, a playbook. This is a, a, a chest of information that I could give to the world. So I do recommend your subtitle as some type of guide or how-to or you know, a playbook to do X, Y, and Z. 
But the title itself, this is where you're probably going to need some help when it comes to marketing. I do like three words or less as a title. I do like positive words on the cover. I do not like negative words on a cover. Even if it's some significant meaning, the more clever you try to become, the more it's going to be confusing to the audience. So if you try to come off as with this negative approach, there's still a chance the audience is going to associate this negative word or negative phrase with your name. And the last thing you want to do is be associated with a negative phrase or negative word. So always have a positive outlook, positive feeling. So when they get it, they know exactly what it's about. And it's a positive feeling. So they would say you, your name equals something positive. Investing, getting better, getting stronger, getting smarter. Whatever it is, your name will equal success. This is a marketing strategy and I highly recommend you take this and apply it to your business because everything comes down to perspective. And if you're giving the wrong perspective to your audience, then you're only hurting your chances of success. So now the title, the book is, has been written, maybe it's being edited. Now, once everything starts to come together, the final stage technically is the formatting. Formatting is pretty significant because it's how it's going to look when people read it. Here at Dream Starters Publishing, we are obsessed with simplicity. You could spend months, maybe years, formatting a book to make it perfect. There are a lot of things you could do. We like simple margins. Maybe it's a 0.5 margin all the way across. We like the spacing to be right around 1.15 to 1.5, depending on the font style, which we do recommend. If it's a certain word count, whether it's Arial or Times New Roman, Times New Roman is a smaller font. You can pack a lot in. It looks very clean, looks very professional. But if you're trying to increase pages and you're trying to make it a very fast read, you do want it to be like a rounded font, which would be the Arial if you want to go with that. So now that it's formatted, and to format it in a six by nine book, you really do have to think of, okay, the cover design. Now, cover design is going to be, uh, you, you would find some type of designer out there and say, I got the title, I got the book. How many pages is it? Remember, you got to format all this before you get the page count, which hopefully you get it to be right around 120, 130, 140 pages. 120 is a, a really good target, just to let you know. In a six by nine, 120 page format, once you get the page count, you can go to cover design. Cover design is really the final, final step because the cover, you can't be, uh, you can't kind of, you can't guess the size. It has to be dead on because you're going to have a spine that's going to be printed. Okay. So now I, let's just say you go with a 120 page book, a typical file size for the cover is 12.520 by 9.250. Now, why does that even matter? Because when you go to upload it to any print house, any which way to get it printed, they're gonna ask for a certain size. And that's pretty close to the exact size that you're gonna need across the board for 120 pages, six by nine book. What I'm going off of is the Amazon Direct, Kindle Direct Publishing uh, numbers. This is gonna be pretty close to wherever you get it printed. And this is all self-publishing, by the way. You can go and get it traditionally published and it's probably a little bit different. Um, however, your traditional publisher may have even different numbers because of what they do with their spine. Spine is a tricky thing. You're gonna really run into problems if your spine count or your word count is at a certain level and your pages are you know, below 90. You're gonna run into some spine problems with getting text on there. So once you're doing the cover design, just think of 12.520 by 9.250. If your page count is right around 120 pages. And now you do the cover design, it's probably gonna be in a PSD file or .ai file. These are the two that you want because eventually it's gonna be saved as a PDF. So let's just say you have the cover file that's saved as a PDF, your book file, probably saved as a Word document, we hope. Do not do it in pages, you're just gonna screw yourself over. Pages is, is, is a tricky thing when it comes to the uploading, but you want to put it in Word, the easiest way to go about it. And this is for the, anybody. You, you have, most people have Word. Some people have Google Docs. It's not the same. I promise you it's not. Uh, you want to use Microsoft Word to make it easy on everybody because there's embedded fonts and everything that could, could come into play. Now you can go with 
InDesign and all these high level programs. But we're watching this on YouTube for a reason, right? We want to be able to do this right here, right now. So you, you format it in a six by nine, you get the cover file, PDF, Word document, you save it as a PDF also. Now you go to upload. This is going to be the stage to get it published on Amazon. So there's a different video I have on our channel and I hope you're subscribed to this, this channel because I have all kinds of cool tips and stuff that I show you weekly, monthly, daily sometimes. And if you check out that video, it shows you how to upload. But once you get it uploaded on Amazon, now you're able to turn into a Kindle version, audiobook version, paperback version, and even a hardcover if you go through a third-party printer. But I'm just getting this to the book published phase in this video. So now you can upload it from a Word doc dot directly to a .mobi file. Okay, so you can actually Google Word doc to .mobi or Amazon's getting really good at just uploading your Word doc and having that very universal across iPhones, Droids, Kindles, the Kindle reader is reading the, the Word doc very well right now. It, never, it, it used to be very tough, but it, it wasn't always like this. So this is something that Amazon's been updating over time since the past five, six years. Anyways, once you are now an, an ebook on Amazon, you are technically a published author. We like the paperback because it's very marketable. So what we recommend is now you turn into PDF cover, PDF insides, and you upload it to the KDP portal of Amazon. Now, once you go through the review process, because you can't just get approved right away, sometimes it could be pretty tricky, depending on uh, the embedded fonts, and they have some tricky things that they may ask. But once you figure that out, they accept it. Now you're a published author. I'm telling you, it's pretty exciting to show others that you're on Amazon. So now you're a published author, you receive the book in the mail, you can get a proof sent to you right through your KDP portal. You can order an author copy even before that the world even knows about it. You're able to review it in person, double check everything. You can get it printed from Amazon for roughly $4. You're not gonna find a place that's gonna beat that. Usually if you go to a print house and you ask for one copy, they're gonna laugh at you because they're gonna ask for a minimum of probably 25, 50, or even 100 copies. So print on demand is what's beautiful about Amazon, but the best part about it is once you upload, you are a published author. So this shouldn't take you too long, especially if you are a great writer or if you have someone helping you write the book. If you have a great designer or if you're gonna be able to do it yourself, design the book, upload Amazon, approval in approximately 24 to 48 hours, and here you go. You're off and running as a published author. I really hope this video helps. My name is Mike Fallett. I own Dream Starters Publishing, and I'm a partner in a company called Book Lead Pro, which will help you use your book as a marketing tool and generate lots of leads. So if you have any questions, comment down below. We'll see you in the next one.